All right, well, good afternoon. My name is uh, Dave Lundgren, and I'm a technical analyst and portfolio manager at uh, Wellington Management in Boston. And we're here at the uh, 2018 uh, CMT Association Symposium. And uh, we're very lucky to have with us as one of the guest speakers, Andreas Klenau, who uh, I've known through reading his books over the years. Um, I've only just had the good fortune of meeting Andreas today, so it's a, it's a great pleasure of mine to, to finally get a chance to meet, to meet you. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and tell, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, what you're up to, and maybe mention sure. your books, which are, which are excellent. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, of course. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, so I just came in from uh, Syrix, Switzerland, uh, where I've been based for the past uh, 15 years or something like that. Um, I run a, as a management company over in Switzerland, and uh, my background is in, in quant hedge funds and uh, especially on the trend following side, uh, quantitative momentum, these kind of things. Uh, as you mentioned, I wrote a couple of books some yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, I wrote Following the Trend back in 2012 right. and follow up with a book on the stock side uh, called Stocks in the Move a few years later. And I'm here today talking about um, Counter trend models or mean reversion, if you like, right. and uh, I just finished my talk just now. Yeah, which which I thought was a fascinating, uh, fascinating concept in the sense that you know you, the, the the point you made was how back when trend following began, it was not a lot of assets, but now there's 250 billion dollars in trend following assets, so that, that it's yeah. such a large contingent within the market that they can actually make exploitable patterns. Yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? I think that was a sure. fascinating idea. Sure. Uh, the theory is, and as I just said in the talk as well, that. The great thing with these kind of theories is that they can never be proved, pr proven or disproven, right. so you can kind of claim whatever you like, but it's a reasonable <laughs> theory. Yeah. Um, no, the idea is that uh, if you can predict what trend followers are doing, and if you assume that the trend followers are doing more or less the same thing, right. very similar things right. anyway, and if you can predict when they stop taking their stop losses, then you can see if they are creating an enhanced pattern there, mm -hmm. if they are exaggerating existing moves. Mm -hmm. In that case, they might be creating a bit of a vacuum when they stop doing that and right. the price snap back. Right. And this is what I'm trying to quantify and uh, predict and enter when trend followers are exiting. Are exiting I'm taking exactly, the opposite yeah. side right. on a different time frame. Right. And, and one of the one of the points you made uh, about about this type of a strategy is that is that interestingly enough, both of these approaches actually work over time. They don't sure. necessarily, obviously, by definition, don't make money in the same day as each other because they're. Sure. Opposite of each other, but but you can sure. put them together and diversify yes. your portfolio by you know implementing two different you know diversifying by strategy instead of by asset class. Yes, uh, so they operate on different time frames, which means that trend followers can be very profitable in the long run. At the same time, you can make money from exploiting trend following behavior in the shorter run. Right. Now you could also argue, which uh, I think many people would do and validly so, that. Why don't you just make a more complex trend following model that takes this into account and right. add these set of rules in there? Sure, you could, but then you end up with a very complex set of rules, right. difficult to evaluate, and difficult to evaluate this extra leg. If you keep them as two different models, you can much more easily evaluate the um, uh, the, the impact right. of this approach instead of baking it together as a more complex. So you would you would you think about it like having two different strategies that you would allocate different different pockets of money to. Yes and then run them simultaneously. Yes, right. exactly. Instead of, instead of overcomplicating one approach, you add satellite models mm -hmm. that do a task. You can, more, you, you can more easily monitor and measure right. their impact. Exactly, right. Yeah. And then, um, so you had mentioned that you had two books, yes. and um, I'm more familiar with the trend following book. Yep. Um, in addition, you wrote Stocks on the Move. Can you talk about yes. the difference between the two? Is, is there like a big leap of of science from one to the other? Is it just um, more just focusing on one specific asset class in the other book? I want to clarify a point with yeah. the second book. Sure. And that is that uh, I, I mean, I, I wanted to clarify a point that was the, the reason for writing it. Mm -hmm. That um, in the first book I show diversified trend following. That is, it's, a pro it's, it's applied on a large set of futures market across all major asset classes. Now, a question I got quite often afterwards was, can you take this set of rules and just apply them on stocks? And right. my answer was, no, you, you cannot. The reason you cannot do that is that even if you have thousands of stocks, they behave very, very similarly. Right. Correlation so, is... Yes. So you, you Especially buy, when you need correlation to be yeah. low, is, when, when you go into a crisis moment, yeah. when you really need correlation, that's when you lose it in stocks, they all, exactly. correlation goes to one. Yeah. Exactly. In a sort of stress, of, stress event, a correlation right. approaches one and your diversification right. is gone. You're right. just holding beta right. and probably more exactly. of it than you would like. Right. Um, so therefore, in my view, you can do that. Uh, the point with diversified trend following is that you apply it on all these different markets and 
Some markets will perform well one year, others will not, but on average, you know, statistically, you have a decent chance of right. long-term profits. Now, with stocks, my point was you have to do things a little bit differently. So I tried to show that what, in my view, could be done differently. And also, you cannot expect the same type of results. You will have a massive beta factor. You right. can decide to take it or not take it, but you will be dependent on the overall performance in the stock market. You can't get away from that. Yeah. So, so what, what advice, uh, so I, I, I trend following uh, sure. as well, um, purely 100% equities long only. Mm -hmm. And so we, we are constantly working with strategies to try to s still introduce uh, relative, uh, uh, introduce um, lack of correlation even though they're all equity. So you can't, you can't necessarily look at correlation to, of price, but maybe you can look at correlation of volatilities or correlation of relative performance or things like that that actually introduce a degree of, of correlation. Have you done any work like that to kind of like maybe think about correlation differently within one asset yeah. class? Yeah, you can do that. But the problem is, and I have to say it's of course possible, I know people who did it very successfully, but there are still problems. Uh, one is that I mean, you could say, for instance, that you can take long and short positions and you keep a right. more or less sure. neutral book and so on. But mm -hmm. of course, shorting is not, as e it's not as easy or as cheap as it might seem in simulations. Oftentimes, yes. yeah. And the futures market, we can do more or less what we want. We can short with the total impunity. Mm -hmm. But in the stock market, well, you never know. Right. There are problems with, the, with borrowing costs, availability, mm -hmm. or recalls, and there are more issues at work. And again, especially when you yes. want to short the most is oftentimes when you can't. Yes. Right. And you cannot, you still cannot hit any, any uh, uh, gross exposure number you would like. Mm -hmm. You can't just target the risk side and ignore the exposure. Right. You can in futures. In right. futures, you don't you don't care what your notional amount is, right? Right. more or less. You don't right. care. You're looking at the actual risk levels, and uh, because there you obviously because of the margin uh, right. the margin system, you can take on higher notional exposure than you want. On the anyway. shorts, yeah, right. Yep. All right, so um, we're going to wrap up here, but I know you're you're working uh, for a number of years now on a new book <laughs> that you've rewritten multiple times. Oh, yes. You were telling me earlier. Yes. Any any insights into what we might be looking forward to from you in your new book? Well, the problem is, since as you say, I've been rewriting it a few times. So uh, if I tell you now, it might be something different. <laughs> it's a year. completely uh, different. Book. About a year ago, I throw away 300 pages. Yeah. I won't happy with. So it might happen again. Who yeah. knows? Um, no, I have no idea at this point. Right. Uh, we'll see. I have okay. some. Well, we're looking forward to it. I, I uh, like I said, your your other two books are excellent. So I really look Thank forward you. to reading what you come up with next. And um, I want to thank you very much for making the effort to come here all the way from Switzerland to, to uh, present. And I, I know you're exhausted and you, uh, you put really a lot of energy and effort into this. Your presentation was excellent. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And it's a pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you.